Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Co over here, and today's video is going to be about how to find time to play more games. This is the most recent option chosen by you guys in the poll in terms of which topics to cover, which things to go into, and finding time to play more games is... It's one that we all crave. It's an idea. I mean, we're all in this hobby, and we're all obsessed with this hobby, and we all, well, I don't know if we all are, but I certainly am, and I'm assuming a bunch of you are, especially if you're watching my videos about spending tons of money on Kickstarter or whatever. There's a degree of obsession, and sometimes we, we get so obsessed with the collecting, the watching videos, the being involved in all other aspects of this hobby, and sometimes we don't play enough games. And there's a variety of reasons for that, and, and sometimes it's just about making gaming, not not gaming as a universe, which we all do already, but making playing games something that actually happens. It's often about prioritizations. And so in today's video, I'm going to go through seven tips that for me, they have definitely been a factor of how I play more games. And for those who don't know already, I have a day job. I run Board Game Co., which is a board game website that we buy, sell, and trade games. I now have this YouTube channel. I have a wife, four kids, and yet I play still in the range of 700 games a year. And that is because I prioritize it. And we'll go through seven examples, seven tips of things you can do to potentially increase your gaming time. Now, off the bat, number one is something we already talked about in terms of in, when I did my gaming table video, I already talked about the fact that having a dedicated space will help, and it doesn't have to be a board game table. A board game table with its covered options and all the, the things you can do to make gaming easier will help, but it doesn't have to be that. It could just be having a, a folding table set up in the corner of a room somewhere. But if you don't have a space to play board games, it is going to be harder to play board games. That is just, that's just life, unfortunately. I mean, there's no, if you, whenever you want to pull out a game, if you have to figure out how to clear the table off, how to move things off, how to do whatever, if you don't have a space to play the game and your only options are not playing the game or playing on the floor, sometimes you just won't play a game. Have a dedicated space to play games. Have an area wherever it is, however nice looking it is, however ramshackle, whatever it is, a dedicated play area will make gaming that much easier when you want to pull something off the shelf. Then we're going to go to tip number two, which is having different access points into gaming, which is why I have these three games set up over here. In your mind, understand and realize that sometimes at the end of a long day, or whatever the circumstances, but let's use the end of a long day, you just don't want to pull out Rum and Bone Second Tide. It doesn't matter whether you're playing with a game group, it doesn't matter whether you're playing with your spouse, your significant other, whoever. Sometimes you just don't want to pull out a longer game, and to that end, it can very much be helpful to have different access points into gaming. It can be helpful to to understand that sometimes, okay, great, you know, it's, it's 9 o'clock at night, I'm going to go to bed soon, whatever it is, I'm just going to pull Railroad Inc. off the shelf, have a 20-minute game with my, with my spouse, and, and done. Call it a night. It can make gaming significantly easier if you don't look at it as, a, as an all-or-nothing proposition. It doesn't have to be three hours of gaming every single time you game. It could be something as simple as pulling a small, short game. And the length of time can, can vary. You want a 45-minute game, pull out Res Arcana. You want a 15-minute game, pull out Railroad Inc. You can pick any sort of time slot that works for you to make sure you have different access points. And in addition to when I say different access points, I don't just mean game length. I also mean the situational. So, for instance... Always have a solo game. I have a weekly game night and I have certain games in my mind that for that once or twice a year where the game group just doesn't meet, which it happens like once a year maybe, but I do pull a game off the shelf. I pull off a solo game. Just because there's no game night doesn't mean I'm not playing games. And so have different access points in terms of player count, in terms of game length, in terms of game weight. Mentally adjust your mind to the idea that there's a game for every situation. Whether that situation is you alone, you and your spouse, this amount of time, that amount of time. If you mentally adjust your expectations around this, this concept, and it's good collection building tips in general, honestly, but if you, if you think through the idea that there's always a game for every situation, then there will always be a game for every situation. Tip number three, and this is particularly relevant to COVID-19 and everything going on nowadays, Play online games. Now, this is one that I, I didn't do a lot back in the day. I mean, I really, I, I've occasionally hopped onto Board Game Arena, Tabletop, uh, Yukata DE, Tabletop Simulator, all that stuff. But I didn't make it a focus of my life until COVID-19, until our options were no games or moving game night to online. That's when I embraced online gaming. And while I, 
I miss in-person gaming. I miss having my regular game night in person, and I'm, I will 100% go back to that as soon as it makes sense to do so. I still play games in person with, you know, select groups of people, like a very small group, my wife, my one or two friends, but at this point, most of the game night has been moved to online. But there's been a side benefit of, of the ability to just hop on a game. Just, you know, you're all in front of your computer, you have a WhatsApp group of the people who play, you're like, hey guys, you know, anyone interested in an hour-long game of Rouge? And people will jump in. There is something more accessible to being able to play a game online. Something easier to, once you know the game, once you have the people, to just say, great, you know, forget scheduling a three-hour game night, forget trying to sync up our schedules of who can leave the house, who needs a babysitter, all that stuff. We're just going to hop online and play board games. One of the best uh, side effects, and obviously COVID-19 is a bad thing, but there have been beneficial side effects, and one of that, to me, has been my understanding that Playing games online can be very useful. It's also been a great way to reconnect with friends who moved away. We've had game group members who moved away that we have been playing online games with. But just the that, that, that part, the whole ecosphere of online games is a different conversation for a different time. But the idea that you can have more accessibility to gaming by being willing to hop in front of a computer, put your headset on, pop up a Zoom meeting, and play a game on Yukata or wherever, that certainly is something that makes gaming more accessible. Number four is the gamification of gaming. Now, gamification, if you're not familiar, is gamification is the concept of turning something into a game to make it more appealing. So, for instance, there's many task manager systems that give you, like, points and rewards as you complete your task. It's gamifying the process of completing your work. But in this case, we're going to gamify gaming, and I, we, what I mean by that is get an app that tracks plays. Now, for myself, I recommend, I believe it's called Board Game... I can't recall, I'll link to it. I think it's Board Game Plays or Board Game Stats. I'll link to it down below. But it is an app, it's on Android, it's on iPhone. There's a free version and then there's a, you pay a dollar or two to get challenges, which I do recommend getting. Now, it just lets you track your plays. And you can do this on Board Game Geek as well. There's a variety of options to do stuff like this. But when you track your plays, it, it gamifies gaming. There's this idea of, I want, to, I want to log another play. I want to log. The way I know I've played 700 games a year is not because I just think that's the number. I wouldn't actually think it's that high, but I, I, I track my plays. I know that on a given year, I play about 120, 130 new games and about 700 games total. So I have a 5 to 1 ratio of new to repeated plays. And it, it really, really makes gaming that much more appealing, especially when you start setting challenges. And it sounds stupid, and it, I mean, these things are stupid, but gamification is genuinely used to make your work life more productive. How much more efficient can it be when it's talking about playing games, which is something we enjoy, as opposed to something that we might be a little more tedious? So gamification does work. It is a good concept. The idea that I know that I have set challenge for, challenges for myself. I've set a 10 by 10 challenge. I'm gonna play 10 games 10 times in 2020. I've set a 5 by 20 challenge. I'm gonna play 5 games 20 times in 2020. I have set a 150 new games challenge in 2020. I set myself every year, I set like five or six challenges of different types to encourage me to just, when I'm tired, when I'm not in the mood, when something is preventing me from actually pulling off a game, I pull a game out and play it. Gamification is a concept that works and it's a concept that I highly encourage to get yourself to play more games. As I'm sure you're well aware, not playing a game doesn't mean you don't like gaming. Sometimes it's just not the easiest thing to pull out, to set up, to get to the table. But as soon as you do, it's fun, it's enjoyable, and no way am I advocating playing more games if you don't want to. But if you have that little hump that you need to get over, gamification, and a variety of these tips we're talking about, can certainly help. From there, we're going to get, uh, going to go into a bit of a cop-out answer, because as you know by now, I'm Jewish, I'm religious, I, I keep the, the, the Jewish faith, I practice the faith, and that does mean that I'm offline from sunset Friday night to... From sunset, from sunset Friday night to sunset Saturday night, I am offline. No phones, no apps, no computers, not doing anything. We use electronic, we use the benefit of electronics, so we have lights on, but we can't turn a light switch on or off. Anything to do with electricity is off limits, which can sound incredibly restrictive, and there's a whole religious reason, I'm not going to get into the religious aspect of it, but what I will say, although I'll note, if you've ever tried getting a hold of me on Saturday and you're wondering why Board Game Co. works on Sunday and not Saturday, that's basically the reason. But... The benefit of it is that through, from a religious stance, from a stance of I will not be on the computer, I will not work, I will not do all the things that make gaming harder, I have a full block of time every, again, Friday night through Saturday where I can play games, where playing games is basically the only 
in terms of fun, in terms of like, you know, in terms of fun things to do, watching movies, playing video games, all those are off the table. But I can play board games, I can socialize. Those types of interactions are primed for that being offline, for forcing myself offline. And so this tip is not to, you know, become Jewish and have Saturday off, but rather Understand the value of locking down time. Understand the value of saying something like, you know what, Sunday's my day off of work, or Saturday's my day off of work, I will not touch the computer. And it's hard, I recognize it's hard. When I go on vacation with my wife once a year, we usually go to Ravenwood Castle, and we used to go to Ravenwood Castle because they had no Wi-Fi. That was one of the perks. I couldn't work even if I wanted to. I couldn't pull out my computer and respond to emails to make sure that things weren't clogging up. I had to be present, I had to be in the moment. And unfortunately they got Wi-Fi, but we still go there. I just, I've built up that habit to a degree so it's easier but it is very hard and if you can't do a full day which I imagine most people won't or can't pick a seven hour block of time somewhere on the weekend just to spend time with your family your friends yourself and play board games the idea that work is off limits the idea that video games movies all that stuff is off limits your phone is off limits it is a very hard principle to adopt for sure if you're not if you don't have a religious you know thing behind you pushing you to do it it's definitely something hard to do but if you can, you will, you will, you will be rewarded for that. It, it is the idea of having blocked off time. Like for instance, when I go to game night, I my phone's away by game night because the last thing I need doing game night is to get an email that I feel needs to be responded to. It was totally fine if I didn't see the email. But once I see it, I, I need to reply to it, and now I'm tossed. I'm torn between continuing to play the game versus taking four minutes out and dealing with the email. These things, we live in this completely connected world which can have perks in terms of online gaming or other aspects, but it certainly can have a downside as well. And, and if we can train ourselves to pick a block of time every week, and start small if it's easier. Start with a two hour block of time every Saturday, and start widening it as you see how beneficial it is. But you have to be strict about it, which brings brings us to tip number six, which is consistency. Consistency is absolutely key in terms of playing more games. When I first got into gaming, my game, my game playing consisted of whenever I had the opportunity, and I never really had a weekly game night. I had friends who were interested in playing games, and maybe once every three or four months I'd be like, hey, who wants to get together Sunday or whatever it is, and once every three or four months we'd kind of make it work. And then one day, maybe about two years into the hobby or so, I got sick and tired of never actually playing all these games I was getting, and I said, screw it, every Thursday night is game night. Whether people show up or not, Thursday night is game night, I will be there. I wasn't into solo games at the time, so I didn't really have a backup if people didn't show up. But from then on, for the next, I mean, it's I think it's seven years now, we have had weekly game night. Maybe once a year we miss, in terms of just, it, it, I'm, I'm unfortunately the, the prime driver of game night, so if I'm not there, sometimes it misses. But if I'm in, if I'm in town, if I'm available, Thursday night is game night. There is, we, we occasionally reschedule to a different night. That's fine. That's a pivot because of scheduling. But there is a game night every single week. It is important to me, and it's important to me because... Games are important to me, so I need to prioritize gaming. It doesn't matter how busy life gets, it doesn't matter how much my inbox gets flooded. Thursday night for four, another night if I put, move it, four hours of consistent, dedicated gaming every single week. And like I said already, if people don't show up, that once or twice a year people don't show up, I play a solo game, and it is scheduled. I know in advance I have to play a solo game. We, we have people book, they come, whatever. You know, in terms of, we have we know we have four people coming this week, we'll play that game every single week. Consistency is key. If you build yourself a schedule, a weekly game night, and again, you can pivot it to your own life. You can pivot it to a weekly date night where you play a game with your spouse or significant other, a, a weekly solo game night where you just play a game, a weekly online, what, or whether it's twice a week, three times a week, whatever it is, if you prioritize it, if you make it consistent, if you make it part of your schedule, consistency in this in this concept is key. And that applies to other aspects of your life as well. I spent the first five years of my marriage just dreaming of having a weekly date night, and we never did. And then a few years ago, maybe two or three years ago, somewhere in that range, we finally settled down. Sunday night is date night. And we'll either watch a movie, play a game, whatever it is, often at home. Unfortunately, having kids makes out, out time, going out events much more expensive. But we, we have a weekly date night because once I said, this is happening, this is important to me, I don't care what else is going on, I will make this work, then it works. Do that for your gaming as well. Prioritize it. Make it consistent, make it a priority, and make it key in your life. 
Which brings us to tip number seven, which is the deprioritization of anything else that isn't important enough to you. That sounds like a bit of a dramatic statement, but I remember once I went to a business class, I went to a, a business course for management or whatever, and the woman giving the, the presentation, one of the things she talked about was the concept of a plate, that very often in life we have a plate of time, and picture it as a plate of food. You put one thing on the plate, you put a little mashed potatoes on, you put a little chicken on, a little bit of pie. As you keep putting things on the plate, if you don't take things off with great intention and care, then things will just fall off because there's not enough room. So as you put one more thing on, something else will fall off and you won't always choose, you won't be able to choose what that is. Instead, you have to take something off the plate before you add something once that plate is full. You have to, with dedicated choice and, and precision, decide the things that aren't going to make it. And this applies to your life in terms of your time. We all have limited time and we're always trying to fit more things into that limited time. Deciding what to take off is just as important as deciding what to add. So for example, let's say again myself, I added YouTube as one of the things I added to my life. And if I don't with precision take things out of my life, then where is that time coming from? And I may not be able to choose. It might come from game night when I don't want it to. It might come from spending time with my family and I don't want that to happen. So one of the things I did in terms of just one example, this whole realm of things going on, but I now have to watch hours and hours of videos about Kickstarters every day that I didn't used to. I used to only do this for Kickstarters I was interested in. Now I do it for basically any Kickstarter because that's part of the channel, the part of the content I produce. And so I specifically with intent took TV and movies basically out of my life. I used to go through a season of whatever in, you know, three or four days as I just went through season after season after season. And now instead, it takes me like three or four days. I'm, I've been watching the same episode of Criminal Minds for the past four days. It takes me much longer to go through TV because I decided that that is going to be my backup. When I'm done with all the content for board games, when, for the YouTube channel, when I'm done with all that, then I'll put on dedicated TV. But until then, I focus on other things. You have to decide what to take off your plate. You have to decide what to take out of your life and that will be a core concept to allowing you to do the things you want. So in terms of board games, it's all about how to spend time playing more board games. In terms of board games, what I have done is I, there are many aspects, there are many things I like doing. I like watching movies, I like playing video games. There are many things that I like doing that I no longer do. I like painting miniatures. There are so many things I want to do, but I've decided that I am basically done with video games. Once in a while I'll pull up a new video game, play it for a bit, but I used to play a ton of video games. Board games took the place of that in my life, with intent. I don't try to do both. Trying to do both will mean you'll, it means you'll fail at one. I instead said I am not playing video games. I'll make occasional exceptions. I am excited for Far Cry, uh, Far Cry 6. But with the occasional exception aside, I decide what it is I'm going to do with my time. I don't play video games, I play board games. I stopped trying to paint minis. I, I started getting into it and it was fun and I liked it. I used to paint way back in the day, but I stopped trying because I have to choose what to do with my time. I don't want to paint minis, I want to play board games. I will hopefully paint minis eventually. I really want to get back into it, but I have to find the time first. Every aspect of our lives, choose the things that don't matter to you as much. I used to be a huge reader, used to be a huge reader. Now I read a few books a year because most of my time is spent reading rule books. And again, I wanna say this again and again, I wanna make it very clear. Don't try to do both and see which one wins because you may not be happy with which one wins. On a regular frequent basis, we make decisions about how to spend our time and we're not always happy with the end result. Decide without the pressure which one you want to do more and then focus on that. Trying to do both will mean you'll lose at both, or you run the risk of losing the thing you want. So prioritize board games by deprioritizing everything else in your life that isn't important to you. Pick your hobbies that aren't important to you. Pick, and this is for all aspects of your life. If, if spending time with your, your spouse or your kids is important to you, make sure that is part of your schedule and take something off your plate that is getting in the way of that. You can't just hope to get it all done. You have to decide with intent what won't get done. So a quick recap of those, I'm gonna use my, my note card which I've been hiding behind that. Number one, have a dedicated space. A dedicated playing area will help. Number two, different access points to gaming will be a big deal. Having short, small, long games, different player accounts, those will all help. Number three, play online board games. They will give you access points into the hobby when you just don't need to, don't wanna leave the house, can't leave the house and wanna to get together with your friends. Number four, Gamify gaming, track plays using a board game app. Number five, have a dedicated block of time that you pull off. Whatever that dedicated block of time is, Saturday, Sunday, whatever is ideal for you, start with a two hour block and expand it. And when I say dedicated, I mean no electronics. Shut yourself off from the world and from all distractions. Number six, 
consistency. Have a weekly game night once a week, twice a week with whoever you want, yourself, your, your spouse, your friends, whatever you want, but have consistency in your gaming. Make it a core part of your life. And finally, number seven, deprioritize the things. Again, I want to be very clear. It's not prioritizing gaming. It's prioritizing gaming through the deprioritization of things that are less valuable to you than gaming. Take the things out of your life that aren't adding as much value to your life as gaming is and find a way to, to through that taken away, add to your gaming. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful or in, in some of these tips, you know, gave you something to think about. If you have your own tips, please leave them in the comments down below. I had a few more tips that I just wanted to cover and I decided to limit it to seven for just the sake of time. But if you have more tips, I will probably be doing an eventual round two of this. More tips to a game more, more tips to play more games. And if I can add any of yours to my list, that would be great. As usual, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. If you find value in this content, please go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, comment, like, share, and really, I genuinely, if you have tips or if any of these tips work for you or resonate with you, please let me know in the comments down below. Or because not just me, I don't, for everyone else who's a part of the conversation, it's it can be incredibly helpful to, to add to the content I'm adding. Meaning, I'm giving some tips, but there are others as well. Until next time, I am Alex from Board Game Co. And have a good one.